smart. I am the Sanderson Collector, and today I am about to move from one house to another, and so it is time for the full library tour. A few things to get out of the way before I show you the books are the things on top of the bookcases, like there's some storage up here, my Doom Slug, an assortment of the various board games, the audiobooks, a couple of tools I use for cataloging books, and on the Wheel of Time shelf there's the Wheel of Time audiobooks. That's everything that goes on top. My books are arranged in a bunch of different ways. The main biggest way is I have my Brandon collection, and then I have my Wheel of Time collection, my trade shelves, and my personal shelves. So the majority of this is going to be the Brandon collection, and that collection is organized by language with the U.S. editions first, then the U.K. editions, and then the translated editions. Within the U.S. editions, I generally organize by size of book, with a couple of exceptions for putting the rare books first. And so we're going to start with the rarest of the rare books. These are my unicorns and stuff that I don't really even put into the collecting database because, well, it's pretty unique. Like, this is my beta reader copy of Calamity, a couple copies of Star's End, and a proof copy of Calamity, proof copies of the Leatherbounds, an unbound proofs for some of the leather bounds, a skyward that is missing some pages, and that is my super unicorn shelf up at the top. Moving down, we then have my art shelf, which has all of the advanced reader copies that I have been able to obtain for all of the branding books. The only UK edition that is snuck in here is the UK Steel Heart, and yes, there are still a few advanced reader copies that I need, there is a video about those, which can be linked in the corner up here. After those, I have my leather bounds. And yes, each of these Mistborns is a separate printing, and I have a few more on another shelf. And I love having all the leather bounds on one shelf together here. They're absolutely gorgeous. Before we get into the regular hardcovers, there are a couple more super rare books that I have, such as the Infinity Blade set and the... Legion set from Subterranean Press, and the Dragon's Bane and Unfettered slipcase copies, and so on. Then we get into the regular hardcovers. For all of the U.S. hardcovers, I do have a first print, first edition hardcover, so Elantris, Emperor Soul, Warbreaker, Mistborn, and so on. I also have a couple of notes here that people have written, a little figure of Loeal, a glyph that was 3D printed for me, and the cute little Boomslug sticker. Moving down to the next shelf, we see more hardcovers, and if there is a hardcover on these shelves, it will be a different printing, or at least a different state of the book. And you can see this very clearly with the copies of The Way of Kings here, where we have a later printing here, and a later printing of Words of Radiance here, where the spine is different. Within each language, I do categorize my books by universe, and then series, and I generally try to put the series in publication order of the first book. So we have the Elantris set up here, and then Warbreaker, then the Mistborn books, then the Stormlight books. All of these are within the Cosmere universe. And then we have White Sand. And then we get out of the Cosmere stuff with Dark One. And the graphic novels are a little bit out of place because they don't all fit on all of my shelves because they're so tall. And I would like to pause here and note that Rhythm of War is shelved upside down because it's a printed upside down copy. And these are the custom dust jackets made by Kraken Books, which are really awesome. And then I have Arcanum Unbounded and my Sanderson Curiosities. These are still ones that I'm trying to figure out where to really put. Then we get into the YA series with Rhythmatist, the Steelheart books. And yes, these are the five different editions from... The different bookstores that came out and so they are all different books and skyward over here now we move on to my second bookcase and you can see another upside down bound edition here and various anthologies dragon's bane which brandon wrote the foreword to and is signed by him the mistborn game books then we have a handful of library edition copies this is a collection that i really would like to expand because i really 
Really like these copies. They are case wrapped, so the cover is bound in. There's no dust jacket on them, and I really like how durable they are and how they feel in my hand. Then I have some paperbacks with the international paperbacks first, and then the regular trade paperbacks here. Then there's a bunch of books that are only available in trade paperback or have trade paperback editions. And we then have the book club editions. Book clubs sometimes put out editions of Brandon's books, and sometimes they're short, sometimes they're tall. Those editions always have a little number on the bottom at the back. That is how you tell it's a book club edition, plus it'll have no number line. And then things start to get a little bit confusing because I do not have enough room on all of my shelves, and so I have had to put in an extra shelf and make some of the shelves narrower. So three shelves down right here, we finish out the book club editions. After the book club editions, we have my little custom Axis figure here, and some shorter paperbacks and other unique little things like Dragon Riders here, the Leading Edge magazines, the Turtleback editions of some of the YA books. I've got my little Doom Slug that was crocheted for me by a friend. If you would like to learn how to crochet one of these, her pattern is down in the description. And then the Alcatraz series, which are printed in even smaller hardcovers. Then we get to the YA paperbacks, and they are here and then down here. Then jumping back up in the size order where I would put them if I had enough room, we get to the small hardcovers. And after the small hardcovers, there's a couple of other large mass market size-ish things. These are smaller than the YA paperbacks, but still fairly large paperbacks. And then Elantris, Miss Warren, all of the regular mass market paperbacks. And yes, all of these Miss Warrens are different printings. And the little tabs up at the top of the books are the printing number labels for my collection so that I can tell at a glance what I have and where it is. We move through the rest of the mass market paperbacks here, including a couple of box sets, going through the whole Cosmere here with Dangerous Woman just kind of sliding in where it can fit. On this last shelf here, we also have the little clay figures that Danny's Darlings made for me and they are adorable on my shelf. And the last little mass market paperback we have here is Armored, which is the only story available as mass market paperback only. After all of the US editions, I then have the UK editions of the books, which are published in the United Kingdom by Glance, and they are generally put out with these white covers with one accent color, and the cover art is usually done by Sam Green. And we start out with Legion and the Emperor's Soul in hardcover. They did not put out a full-size hardcover for Elantris, Warbreaker, or Era 1 of Mistborn. And that is why we start with these. I put this one here because Emperor's Soul generally goes earlier in my collection set. Then we get into the Mistborn ones and the Way of Kings. This one being one of the hardest to find books in my set, probably the hardest UK edition to find, the first edition UK Way of Kings. And now we move on to my third bookcase. From here on out, we're not going to have any more swag on my shelves. I don't tend to display a lot of my swag. I use it for taking pictures of books and just making things look nice. Here we have the large format trade paperbacks in the UK. And I will hopefully be getting more display-ish places to put my swag, but for now, that is all the swag that I have on display. And we have the UK 10th Anniversary Mistborn hardcovers and the various UK case-wrapped editions, which are usually reserved for novellas, the one exception being this cute little edition of Arcanum Unbounded, and then the Way of Kings set that came out recently and I have not quite gotten my hands on yet will also be this size. Then we have the mass market paperback UK editions, which are 
slightly larger than the US size. And yes, I am missing some of these. For example, I do not have Alloy of Law here. I do not have a newer edition Orange Elantris or any of the new formats of the Mistborn set. I will still be looking to fill those out in the future. And there are mass markets for a lot of these. Here's the infamous Black Spine Oathbringer that they redid with still calling it a first print. And we move along and end with the Alcatraz set here for all of the editions in English. Don't worry, just because I'm done with the books in English doesn't mean I will stop describing them in English. And so we move down and here again, it gets confusing just because I put in an extra shell. I've put in a bunch of the mass market books where they will fit because they're shorter. And so the languages are slightly out of order. In general, I organize my languages alphabetically by the language and so you can see down here we have French out of order but we have the full French set with the full Stormlight art and this is a really cool set. The art on all of these is by Alain Brion. He does all of the French art and there's a larger format paperback set and a smaller format set and then we don't even get to finish all the French editions because we jump to where the books should be in alphabetical order and we start with the Bulgarian set. And the first book here is one of my favorites. This is the Bulgarian Emperor's Soul in actual wood. I also have the Bulgarian Skyward and Star Sight. I have not found room to put them on my shelf yet. I will do that as soon as I move in to my new place. And after the Bulgarian set, we go to C for Chinese. And we have simplified Chinese and complex Chinese or traditional Chinese, I believe. And so we have the first set here in order along with a couple of very nice hardcovers and some cool bind ups. This is one of the only languages that Infinity Blade is out in. And that's really nice. And down here we have more Chinese and you can see that they even have the Alcatraz set out with some completely ridiculous covers. After Chinese we have Czech and then we have some more Czech books organized by size and even down here we have the little Czech um, Warbreaker which I call the gay romance version showing what I believe is probably Light Song and Vasher or maybe Light Song and the God King looking very very swole and that is the Czech set of books all the way up through here I believe. Then we have Danish and Dutch and that brings us to the end of the third bookcase. Now we get into the fourth bookcase and near the halfway point of my collection and we have some more Dutch books here, and then a single book in Estonian. I have a couple more in Estonian that are not on the shelf yet, but it is one of the rarer languages for sure. Then we have the French books in the place where they should be alphabetically. You'll notice that most of these are the larger format books because the smaller format ones are on the other shelf over there. And French is another language that has Infinity Blade released with the original cover and that one is really hard to get in any other language. After French we have the Mistborn trilogy with the UK covers in Finnish. Then we move into German. German has some really interesting cover choices that really don't make sense like looking out from Erythiru over a bunch of lakes or like standing staring at a bunch of waterfalls. Like I really don't understand some of the German covers, but I do have a bunch of German books moving through German, German, German. Then we have here German Children of the Nameless, which is one of only a few languages you can get it in. You can't even get that one in English. And we have Greek. Some of these Greek books are really, really important to me because they came from my mailbox and someone actually gifted them to me. I still don't know who they are, but they are some of the only mysterious gift books that I have received and so they are really precious to me. After the Greek books, we have Hebrew and I have a handful of books in Hebrew 
right here. These are interesting because they do not have an ISBN that goes with the barcode, and so they are a lot more difficult to categorize sometimes. I did skip over a quick little set of French white sand hardcovers here because they're so big, this is the only shelf they sit on. After French and the Hebrew here, we have Hungarian, which has some of my favorite cover art, like this Elantris here, where they split the title down the spine, which I think is really awesome. And sometimes I wish the UK editions would do this. They have some absolutely amazing cover art. Rayodin drawing an Aeon, who looks properly hoeed here, which I have not really seen any good depictions of the zombies of Elantris, and this is really cool. And it ties into the second art here where we have Serini in front of him. They did a similar thing with the split spine for The Way of Kings. And we have a one last Hungarian edition down here before we get into Indonesian. And yes, they do have the full Alcatraz set out. I just don't have them. And my one book in Italian. And yes, they also do have the full Stormlight set and I believe some other books out in Italian as well. But again, I don't have those, and I don't have a massive collecting budget at the moment, so it might be a while before I get them. And then we have what I believe is my only complete language collection. These are the Japanese books, and Brandon did not sell incredibly well in Japan, and so they have all gone out of print. We've got Way of Kings, Elantris, and then the first Mistborn trilogy, each in three parts here. And I think they are really cool. They have a lot of fun anime style covers and the artwork is really pretty and I do like them a lot. But again, like I said, they only published a handful of them there. Then we have the Mistborn set in Lithuanian with some more awesome cover art here. And then we move into Polish. I have a lot of the Polish hardcovers because I have a friend and fellow collector who lives in Poland and has helped hook me up with some of those, and I really appreciate that. So thank you to Alex for those. And I have a couple of Polish paperbacks here. I am still working on getting all of the other older Polish paperbacks where they have some insane covers. And then we get into Portuguese. And yes, there's a mix of Portuguese from Portugal and Portuguese from Brazil here. I don't have enough to really separate them into two separate sets, but there are two separate publisher sets of books here. After the Portuguese, we get into Romanian, and these books here are all in Romanian, and it's really cool. And then we have Russian, including this weird bind-up, where they put all of Mistborn Era 2, Alley of Law, Shadows of Self, and Bands of Mourning, into a single volume, and then decided to split up Oathbringer, which I don't understand that decision. But we have now reached the end of the fourth bookcase. This fifth bookcase over here is going to have the last of my foreign language editions, starting with Serbian, and then Slovak, which has some really cool titles, Metallurg, Pyro, Catastrofa, and then Spanish, which is the foreign language that I have the most copies of and the most editions of with a nice set of hardcovers. Yes, I'm missing a couple here and a gorgeous hardcover of Rhythm of War, which has the alternate cover art from Bulgaria that was put out specially by a bookstore in Spain and the large paperbacks, including these little bits right here, which are not out in English which includes a lecture Brandon delivered one year at a conference in Spain, which is really cool. And then we have the smaller format paperbacks. These include the infamously bad screaming face, Final Empire. A couple more little paperbacks here. And then we get into Swedish, which is a set that a friend of mine actually brought back for me while she was on vacation there. And then Thai right here. And we finish off with Turkish and the very last foreign language edition of Pure Brandon Sanderson books that I have is Turkish Children of the Nameless, one of the only other languages that you can get Children of the Nameless in. This edition is actually signed and numbered number one because when I brought this to Brandon, 
He had never seen one of these before, so he went ahead and numbered it for me as the number one edition of that book, and that is my only number one copy at the moment. Moving back to English, we have my full Wheel of Time hardcover set here. No, not all of these are first printing hardcovers. I would like to get a set of those, but that ship has probably sailed at this point because the prices have shot up with the show releasing. Then we have a couple more out of order books with the mass market paperbacks for the Wheel of Time. And yes, I have a bunch of printings of a bunch of these because they are fairly easy to pick up at the used bookstore on discount. And so I have a tendency to grab those and I can. Lots of the mass market paperbacks here, including one for the Legend Anthology, a couple of the box sets here, and on this bottom shelf down here we have my Wheel of Time advanced reader copies, of which I have a handful. Certainly not a complete set, but I'm not pursuing these as stringently as I am the other Sanderson collectible arcs because, well, they're not Sanderson and some of them are really hard to find. And a couple of the leather bounds, same deal, I'm not pursuing those. And a couple of other special editions, and then some extra regular hardcovers, different printings, and anthologies and companions and stuff. And that brings us to the end of the fifth bookcase. Moving on to bookcase number six, we have more Wheel of Time hardcover stuff, including some of the graphic novels, the role-playing game, coloring books, several more hardcovers, the trade paperbacks that mostly use the covers from the ebook editions, and a couple of the regular trade paperbacks, then the mass markets that came out right before the show did, which have the wheel art covers, which are really nice, and we moved down, a couple of other odd little sized editions, and then a book club set, of which I'm only missing the Shadow Rising, so if you know where to get a copy of that, let me know. The large stuff, the big white book that won't fit anywhere else. And then I have a set of UK hardcovers, definitely not complete. Same with the set of UK trade paperbacks. The UK larger format paperbacks, which are some of my favorites. And then the UK mass markets, which go super well together on the shelf. Although I am still missing a copy of number 11. I actually have two copies of number 10 because... They have different colors for the foiling, which I thought was really interesting. Then I have my only foreign language Wheel of Time editions with a handful of Bulgarian ones here. Then I have my countersigned books where I get one author, in this case, Brian McClellan, to sign Brandon's book. And then I take that to Brandon and have him sign Brian's book and they write notes to each other. These are a ton of fun to get done. So I have a bunch of authors here who are rivals of Brandon's or friends of his and so on, and that is an absolute blast to get these. Then we move to the last shelf. Most of the books on the seventh shelf top are going to be my trade and extra copies of things, and I do need to put one of these sets of Way of Kings into my regular collection because it's a second state and it will end up there when I rearrange things. But yeah, I have some trades and extra copies of things here moving all the way through. Some of these books are going to actually end up in little free libraries or being used for countersigned books as well. Then we get into the books that I haven't shelved yet but still wanted to put up like Skyward Flight, which just came out, the Creative Writing Class in Spanish, which is only available in Spanish, a couple newer printings of the Mistborn books, and some Cytonic stuff. Then we get to my personal set of books. These are generally my reading set of books. Some of them are a lot older, and I've had them for a long time, or they're just personalized to me. I have a full set of the leather bounds, and I will include a Way of Kings here when I reshelf my books. And I do have a set of like Way of Kings Prime for a reading copy and so on. You can see these don't really match in format, like paperbacks, hardcovers, that's okay. These are just my personal reading copies. And yes, this collection is not 100% complete. That's okay, I'll get there. I do have my various unlicensed alternate art, dust jackets, 
down here, which are still a lot of fun to collect. White sand, which isn't complete. As you can tell, I haven't super kept up on everything for reading copies, but I will eventually get it all filled out. And we end our tour with the last of my reading copies here. That's everything for my library tour this time. I hope you have enjoyed seeing all of my crazy collection. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos because I talk about all kinds of cool Brandon Sanderson collecting things every week. And if you really enjoyed the video, remember to leave me a like. Let me know in the comments what your favorite book or section of this tour was. I will be back next week with another cool collecting video. And until then, happy collecting.